I think the only thing that people in the United States and politicians can agree about on immigration is that the system is broken. America as being the beacon of hope that is drawing in immigrants from every corner of the world over many generations. Immigration isn't just a chapter in America's history. It is America's story, actually. One question that demands our attention is the fact that can America actually sustain this legacy of opportunity with an open border policy? Or does it risk eroding the foundation that made it a land of opportunity and promise to many people over several generations? As it stands today, the U.S. stands at crossroads where the promise of opportunity must be balanced against the need for security, against economic stability and sustainable growth within the system. So I thought, let's explore why this balance is crucial, what is at stake, and why we need to rethink the issue with open borders for America's future and how this even affects the rest of the world. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe to the channel and give the video a thumbs up if you get any value from it and help us reach a thousand subscribers. That will be very helpful. Let's get into it. The first point I would love to talk about here is the economic necessity of immigration. So let me acknowledge here the argument for immigration's economic benefits. Immigration has fueled America's economy over many generations, and today around 17% of U.S. labor force comprise of immigrants, where immigrants are filling gaps in different sectors of the economy, for instance, in agriculture, in healthcare, and even in tech. You also find that immigration-driven businesses inject innovation and jobs into the system, creating about $2 trillion in GDP annually in America, and that's according to America's Immigration Council. In short, immigration, when well-regulated, can boost the economy for everyone, for locals and even new immigrants alike. So that means we need to prioritize economic migration. In a second report I will talk about here is a 2017 National Academies report that found that first-generation immigrants will cost the government more than native-born Americans, about $1,600 per year per person, whereas second-generation immigrants, although become some of the strongest contributors to the U.S. economy, but you find that the net positive does not take effect in Im immigration in the United States until the second generation and beyond. Now, this investment has value, but only if we prioritize a skilled migration that can immediately lift the economy of the nation. And that is what several nations have tried to implement. Take, for instance, in Canada and even in some of the Scandinavian countries, I would even argue that in places like Russia and China, that's what they've done over the years. To the second point now where I will talk about uh, the perils of unchecked borders. Now, what happens when the system lacks control, when we open up the borders to everyone? I've talked about in the first part, you know, the consideration for the economic importance of immigration in the system. But what happens when the system lacks control? In 2022, for instance, nearly 2.3 million migrant encounters were recorded at the U.S.-Mexico border. That's similar to a mid-sized city in the United States arriving at the border annually. There's also about 1.6 million encounters in 2021 at the U.S.-Mexico borders. Those are in addition to the 1.1 million originally projected for the year 2023, for instance, and making it about 3.3 million people that was welcome to the United States in 2023 alone. Now, the question is, is this sustainable? And with this volume comes strain on border security, on law enforcement and local communities. Unchecked borders will stretch resources thin 
with overwhelmed detention centers and about 2 million asylum applicants backlog that we currently have in the system, you will have overburdened local services in border states like in Texas and Arizona. Let's not even talk about the extreme cases where we found immigrants having to shelter in schools in places like New York that we saw just a few months ago. Now, the local governments in these states will bear the brunt. They will be forced to divert funds from schools and health care and infrastructure to support basic migration processing and humanitarian care. I believe a sustainable immigration system should lift the economy. It should not drain it. Let me get to the third point here. And that is the security and safety concerns about illegal immigration. Let's talk about security. An open border policy isn't just an economic issue. It's a national security risk, in my opinion. I come from a country where there are porous borders. The consequences is that you have a terrorism insurgency in the nation. You will find communities that are displaced. You find kids and adults kidnapped for ransom from time to time. People killed in their thousands. Children raped and sold into sex slavery. You find the economy grounded to a halt on safe neighborhoods and rising unaffordability when the economy is grounded. And many, many more social vices you find. A controlled system differentiates between welcoming those who seek opportunities, for instance, and the possibility of inadvertently inviting those who may do harm within the system. And you find border agents in the U.S. reporting intercepting individuals with potential ties to organized crime and trafficking and even terrorism. Now, it's often argued that you have to think the best of people, in this case illegal immigrants, who are coming from these countries, and not assume the worst of people. Now, I bet that there are good illegal immigrants. I have met some, actually. But my argument is that I wouldn't leave my doors open with kids in the house while I go to work at night. Now, think about this. If you consider Canada's policy in immigration, for instance, with a stricter background checks and eligibility criteria that ensures a controlled entry. You contrast that with an open U.S. border policy that provides entry without these rigorous st standards. Now, a controlled border does not mean closing your doors to people. It simply means screening entry effectively for everyone's safety in the nation. And I think that cannot be undermined. Well, let me talk about the social and cultural impact of illegal migration as well. Immigration should enhance a social cohesion within the society. It shouldn't test the limits of social cohesion. That's what I believe. But the current influx in the United States undermines a social cohesion the way it ought to be. You have rapid, unregulated immigration that can overwhelm local resources, that can create tension as the residents compete for opportunities, for housing, for jobs, for services. And here, let me talk about this issue. I don't mean every immigrant lack respect for functional system, but hear me out. Unchecked immigrants sometimes means that people are not prepared to adapt to the system that make their host countries work. Let me go on a detour here, actually, and discuss the subject of ghettoization. Most illegal immigrants hardly understand human rights, nor do they have respect for it for the most part, and that's because it's really not exist in most of these nations where people come from. I am from one of those countries. They hardly understand functional system. They're used to cutting corners in those systems where they come from because that's the, just the way it works there. The reason also you find that they will declare asylum under false claims a lot of times. Let me exclude the people coming from war-torn countries in this case. We can talk about that another day. But most illegal immigrants are used to cutting corners even when there, there are legal options and legal routes to do things. For instance, you find 
Instead of going to school within their host system in the host country, they might take the route of doing a contractual marriage or get a girl pregnant to get a green card. The priority is to become citizen, not the greater good of that society where they now live. It's hard for them also most times to obey the laws that make the countries work. Don't get me wrong. This doesn't apply to every immigrant. I've said it before, I'm an immigrant myself. But when we bring in the third world class people from the third world countries around the world, your systems will likely be compromised in the host country. It's the reason you will see reports where certain immigrants go to beaches in Canada, for instance, and would stoop down and take a dump in the sand at the beach. You have no respect whatsoever for the law, for the system in your host country in that case. The fifth point I would talk about is the, the economic consequences of illegal migration. I've talked about this in passing before. The economic cost of illegal migration is real. While unauthorized immigrants contribute billions in taxes, and even in local and state taxes, up to about $11.7 billion is contributed in taxes. But you find public schools, healthcare system, and social services must also accommodate everyone coming into the system. These costs, most times from data, from reports, show that it can actually outstrip the contribution from the immigrants and st stressing state budgets. Now, a regulated system also, in my opinion, would allow immigrants to reach their potential faster. And take that from me. I, I belong in the category. A regulated system would allow immigrants to reach their potential faster because it creates pathways to citizenship that would enable quicker integration for the immigrant and potentially higher wages and boost the contributions in taxes that they will have and their contribution to the GDP overall. That is also very important. Now, let me talk about the sixth point here, and that's rethinking open borders. Many people will say that the biden Kamala administration has now closed the border and that migrant encounters at the borders are now at the same level as in Trump's administration. Specifically, the, the border was closed in June of 2024. That's three and a half years after this administration took office. I grew up in the developing, or you can say third world nation, I know what a kangaroo project look like when I see one. I know how an incumbent leader would execute last minute project just before the elections or before a special visitor in the nation. You find road constructions and reconstruction, buildings painted overnight, even roads swept and washed overnight right before a political campaign starts. In this case, they capitalize on the people's short-term memory and their inability to, to appraise meaningful projects and good leadership in the system. The biden Kamala administration have only given the people a very well-washed and decorated tome with a ribbon on it, in my opinion. It's a third-world classic playbook. It works! It works because the leadership is corrupt in these nations, and you know, the way they've also gone about it, the biden Kamala administration. It works because the leadership is corrupt in their ways. And they know the people in some regard have become incapable of seeing through such nonsense. That is not America. That is not the America I dreamt of immigrating to when I was a teenager. That is dishonesty at its peak and corruption at its finest where you find Kamala Harris and the rest of the people on their cabinet saying that the border was closed for almost four years. And right before campaign starts, you close the border in reality, but lie to the nation for over three years. I wish I also have enough time to discuss the issue with leadership, especially in the third world countries a little further, and how it actually contributes to the issue with illegal migration to the first world nations. But I think I will add that as an addendum, a short episode after now. To the point about looking forward. Take, for instance, Canada and the United States are both immigration nations, but there is a difference in Canada's system where a blueprint is defined for control 
immigration without ex exclusion, and that's for the most part in Canada, it prioritizes skilled immigrants supporting economic growth in the shortest possible time and managing the population needs. I will caution here that Canada's immigration has also taken a nosedive of late, and that's because they've adopted international generosity over the greater good and the national identity in the nation. Let me also talk about the, the European Union that adopted a similar model with the blue card system where they specifically target high-skilled workers to fill gaps in sectors in the economy where they need them the most. These models actually show that countries can maintain open doors to immigration without sacrificing control. Open borders, however idealistic we may imagine it, are not sustainable. A controlled, selective approach does not actually mean turning people who are in need away. It simply means ensuring that everyone entering the country can contribute meaningfully and integrate successfully, and especially within the shortest possible time. That is beneficial to immigrants. It's also beneficial to the system where we reap the net positive of that system in the shortest possible time. I hope for everyone watching this right now, for you watching this right now, I hope you will think about these points I've talked about in the final moments leading up to the 2024 elections in the U.S. and choose the leader, the president of the nation wisely. Choose the one who stands for the greater good of the nation while also considering to some great extent the international generosity that is needed for immigration levels to be maintained at levels that are sustainable for the system. That is very important, and we should not undermine it. If you made it this far, there are chances that you and I share something together in our thought process. And that's the reason I think you should click on the subscribe button, give the video a thumbs up, also share your thoughts. I want to know what you think about illegal immigration and how that is affecting the system in the U.S. or maybe even in Canada. Also, Click here for my follow-up dialogue on the issue with leadership from third world countries and how that also contributes to the issue with illegal migration to first world countries. Well, take care. Now we'll be seeing you shortly. Bye-bye.